Fellas, you join me from the driver's seat of the S15. I'm going to be yelling because I don't know how well you can hear me over exhaust noises and road noise and stuff. Um, so basically what I'm going to be doing here is all the clips of the S15 build you've seen up to date, are now up to date rather, um, I'm out of footage. So, so what I'm going to do for you guys today is bring you up to speed on what else has happened with the car over the last two years or so, I think since the last recording that you would have seen that I just put up the other day. Basically you would have seen at the end of that video, I got the car running with the new turbo, took it for a little test drive, uh, and it didn't end up going so well, and I, I now have the hindsight to tell you what that was and what's happened since then. So. What I'll do while I'm driving somewhere right now, I'm going to give you a bit of a backstory. I hope you can hear me. Take two, I remounted my camera. So this is going to be basically me continuing on everything from there because from there I didn't really start collecting clips and things didn't go very well as you can imagine. Part of the reason for our hiatus was how long things took from there getting the car back on the road, which you can now see it is because I'm driving in it. Uh, I'm recording this by the way in uh, 2020. Uh, it is uh, May, so People have been in lockdowns and all that kind of jazz. That's why I'm here by myself today. Um, but, so yeah, basically, at the end of that last video, you saw the car shot the dipstick. We did a compression test. Compression was low in three of the four cylinders. I now know why. Basically what happened, and at the time we thought potentially it was valves. We thought potentially it was gonna be valves or, because it had some headwork done not long beforehand, or, thought it could be rings. Um, when I first bought the car over five years ago now uh, and I had a compression test done around the time of purchase, the numbers were a little bit on the low side. I don't remember what they were, but I actually got this car for a pretty damn good deal for the time. And I used the low compression numbers as a bit of a bargaining chip when I bought it. Uh, and then I drove the car for years, never had any problems. So I thought, you know, I wasn't too surprised by the engine going. I was kind of like, oh, maybe it's just something to do with that. Um, so, you know, I wasn't too too surprised. But what it turns out, it actually wasn't rings. It wasn't valves. Um, it was the fuel pump. So I had a Bosch 040 fuel pump in this car, and that's what it had when I bought the car. Noisy thing, early 2000s kind of tech. Uh, very popular for its day. Uh, and they, they, they're okay, but it was getting on a bit. And I actually had a new Walbro 460, I think it was. Uh, in the box in my room ready to go in the car and that was actually going to be one of the next things I was going to do after the turbo um, and because I was going from a bigger turbo to a smaller turbo albeit a much higher tech one um, I thought you know cruising the car around on very low boost you know low boost setting I wasn't going above three or four thousand rpm I wasn't getting into boost very much just a little bit and it you know shout the dipstick everything died so that caught me a little bit by surprise like you know you might think I got in and gave it a proper rip but I didn't at all I was very, very careful. The car's got a Haltech and everything, so like I didn't think it would just completely implode. But basically what it turns out, what happens, and this is me cutting forward in the story a bit, because some things have happened till then, but after getting the engine all back together and everything, um, I gave the guys the new fuel pump, because I had it done by a shop, which I'll get into in a minute. But I gave them the new fuel pump, and they built the engine, did everything, started it up, because we all kind of wanted to see what happened. When they did the engine tear down, there was actually holes in the cylinders. Uh, sorry, holes in the pistons, uh, which means it got way, way, way too lean, detonated very badly. Uh, lots of bad stuff happens, hence the crankcase pressure because there was, you know, <laughs> it was a straight drop down from cylinder head all the way to the crankcase, I guess. Um, but basically, the fuel pump died, uh, so it just went mad lean, and they they confirmed that for me. And they confirmed that for me. Um, when they put the engine back together and tried to start it up, even at idle, it wasn't getting enough fuel pressure, let alone when they tried to go anywhere on the dyno. So obviously they, they put the new fuel pump in and everything like that, and it's all good now. So it wasn't the turbo, it wasn't the ECU necessarily, it wasn't the tune, it was the fuel pump, just gave up the ghost, and unfortunately it had very expensive consequences. So continuing on from there, I'll show you some pictures on the screen and things when I have some images or any video clips I can insert, but obviously it was a little bit light on that because I was so pissed off at the car at this point. I'd spent so much money on it already. Um, you know, I'm trying to save, I had other stuff going on as well. I didn't really, I wasn't really in the position to 
go spending, you know, 10, 20 grand on it again in the same year sort of thing. But anyway, didn't sell the car, thought about it. It was, you know, at this point, didn't know what was going on with it. I knew it was going to be bad. Got in contact with a very well reputed Sydney workshop that many would know who build, you know, very fast GTRs and Nissans and uh, VLs and all that kind of deal. Won't name their name because I wasn't particularly happy with what they did with the car and how long it took, but anyway, got it on the trailer, sent it off there. Uh, this was probably sometime early 2018, late 2017, I can't even remember. Trailed the car up there, basically let them take the engine out of the car as it was, which they did. And then after they pulled it out, I went and picked up the shell, trailed it back to my place, and the, cell sh the, the, the actual shell of the car sat just as a roller at, at my parents' house for the best part of a year. No engine in it, couldn't move it, couldn't do much with it. Had all sorts of bad things happen while it was out there. Got caught in hail. Um, obviously it sat in the sun a whole bunch. Given the nature of our house, the car with no engine can't get up to the garage, so it had to live outside. I have a car cover, but it's not the best quality car cover. And as anyone with car covers may know, having them on or off, bad things are still gonna happen to the paint regardless. So. They just took so long and the communication was so bad and I was getting more and more irate with this build as it was going on because I saw them on the internet pumping out all these other cars and bragging about how quickly they turned them around for whatever event. But if you're a regular paying customer that's not spending 100 grand, you're only spending 15 or whatever. Uh, it takes ages. So anyway, that was that was one bit of the thing. But anyway, the engine got fully built. So even though I had a lot of head work done a little bit earlier that same year, uh, I was like, okay, I'm gonna spend the money again. So. Uh, I'm going to try and remember some of the specs of what I did, what I had done, but it's been a little while, but it was uh, Nitto bottom end, forged pistons, I-beam, forged rods, um, all the ACL bearings, all that kind of jazz, ARP head studs, uh, MLS head gasket, did 256 uh, Tomé Pond cams, just the drop-in ones, uh, kept the same turbo, the GTX 2867, and kept the Haltech. What else did I do? Obviously did the fuel pump, the Volvo, uh, a couple of other things like, you know, new oil pump. Yeah, it took, took the best part of about, I'd say, I can't even remember, it was probably 10, 11 months or so from taking it there to when I finally got it back running. Um, and the, it cost so much money and everything like that. And it just took so long that I kind of, by that point, was, was really just over the car, you know, I was, tired of it, it cost me so much money. I got it back and I didn't really like how it behaved. I felt like the engine felt worse than when I, like before it blew up. I don't know what it was, maybe it was the tune, maybe it was, I don't know, it was just, I'd never driven a forged motor before. I don't know why, it's just the characteristics of it were a little bit different. It kind of made it feel a bit more lazy. I guess the compression's lower, but um, I don't really know. Um, I think it's something that would be fixed. As I've driven it more, it's gotten a bit better and uh, I haven't gone back for a final power tune and I think that would probably wake it up the rest that it needs. But generally speaking, I'm quite, quite happy with how it is now after, you know, I've put six, 7,000 kilometers on the car since it's been rebuilt, done servicing, done some general tidy ups and whatever, whatever. So it's running good now. It doesn't get a lot of use. As you saw in some of our other update videos, I've had an M5 in between sold my E30, had a motorbike for a while. I commute to work in the city, I work in the city, so I catch the bus. Um, the car really wasn't getting out much at all. And I really had to force myself just to even do the running case for the engine. So I actually got my brother to do some of them for me um, because I didn't have the time or the inclination. I was just so over the car by then. But I mean, you'll note I still got the car. So like I didn't throw in the towel necessarily. Uh, and I've had the car now over five years. Yeah, so I had the engine built. It's a good engine. It, sh it can make way more power than I'll probably ever throw through it. Uh, I don't believe this chassis, at least in a road car form, should see more than 300 real kilowatts. I think anything over that is just for burnouts or for drags or power skids or roll racing, whatever you want to do, which is all cool stuff. Absolutely love it, but I do plan to still be able to drive this car around on the street. If I have to, I can daily drive it. I like doing that. At the moment, I think it's making about 230 at the rears, which is no more than it was making before it blew up, but um, it's on a safe tune still. So I would think with my current turbo and on 98 fuel, I could probably 
bust out around 250 to 260 real kilowatts. If I went E85, I might crack 300. Um, but I'm a bit put off E85 at the moment. I don't, I don't really like some of the, because I don't drive the car very often and E85 isn't the kind of fuel that likes to sit, you know, it evaporates, turns to water, whatever. Uh, it can be a bit of a pain to get the car started and everything like that. So I don't know if I want to deal with any of that. I might keep it on 98. Um, and if I wanted to go for more power on 98, I could put a GTX 3071 or something like that on there and probably make high 200s. expecting it to be like that so anyway we'll make do so anyway while the car's cooling down for a sec basically i uh, got the engine back uh late ish 2018 i believe car kind of sat around for a while took a while to get the thousand k run in aesthetically the car hadn't changed too much i think at that point so anyway beyond the engine stuff um some things did change on the car aesthetically in that time as well i kind of had been in two minds around the car like that whole time like i wasn't driving it much um i actually let my brother start driving it around for a while so he put a few thousand k's on it um, and he didn't take the best care of it anyway. So, you know, me kind of ignoring it and him not really caring about it because it's not his car. So, got a little bit trashed in some respects. The paint's not very good. Uh, it just needs some TLC, needs some love again. Um, I'm now sort of in a position where I have the, the passion back again for it and I've got the time and I don't have too many other things going on. So I'm gonna start giving it the love it needs again and you'll be seeing that on the channel. Without further ado, I think what I'll do is just walk you around the car a little bit talk you through some things about it, show you some of the aesthetic stuff that's changed and some of the things that need some attention. Uh, and then we'll go from there. If you haven't already, please like the video in, in respects for my bank account. Pretty damn nice, but very, very crowded. I don't know if you can hear, but there's a 32 GTR over there. Uh, not planned, just happens to be there. Sounds awesome. So anyway, yeah, here's the 15, the 200. It's gonna be pretty rough, so brace yourselves. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I've let it get to this state, but it's gonna get cleaned up, don't worry. The good things that have happened, I'll show you first. So, Ganador mirrors, these are genuine ones. They are cool, that's about all I can say about them. These are some very, very, very expensive <laughs> LMGT4s. Uh, so, Nismo LMGT4 wheels, some may or may not know what that is, but they might. you might notice they look a little bit different to a typical LMGT4. Uh, normally, you'd see them in just a single, single tone black or a single tone white. I had these ones, I bought them in single tone black. Uh, they were a little bit rough when I bought them, but I took them to Barrel Bros in Sydney. Had him strip them back, fix them up, and then do a custom order sort of spec on these, because I love LMGT1s, LMGT2s, but I like the weight of the 4 and the simplicity of the 4, and obviously the price of the 4 is <laughs> a lot better, and obviously trying to find the fitment for an S15, this was much easier. So these are 8.5 fronts, 9.5 rears, plus 34 front, plus, uh, I don't even know what the rear is, plus 30 something, I have it written down somewhere. but. I uh, had them refinished, so polished lips, diamond cut centers, uh, the spoke color, it might not show up well on video in the shade here, but this is a, a dark gray, it's BMW Diamond Schwartz gray, which keen viewers may recall is actually the color of my old E30. At the time, I still had the E30 when I had that done, so I thought it'd be kind of funky. I love the gray, so I thought it'd be cool to kind of color match as a bit of an homage uh, and have the gray there. Managed to track down some genuine raised center caps as well. So these are the metal with the gold inserts, they look sick uh, and they're super rare. I hadn't seen another set for sale, so I saw these. So snag those. At the moment I've got some gold GK Tech wheel nuts on there. Not sure if I'm loving the gold, might change them to black at some point. Uh, the car needs a brake upgrade very badly. So it will at some point cop Brembo's and they might be uh, gold calipers. So at that point it might be a bit too much. So maybe I'll change them then. But loving those. Got some Pilot Sport Cup 2's on there. Very, very good rubber. And actually had to replace one of the rears because I got a puncture not long after I bought them, which was really annoying. But 
yeah, apart from that, can't complain too much. Uh, I'm not sure if you would have seen, but it's got... Actually, I think you maybe would have seen in an old video it had rear pods, but they were actually the fiberglass kind of remake pods. Uh, it actually now has genuine plastic uh, Nissan factory pods on the rear, so they fit much, much better, and they're less likely to get those sort of hairline cracks and things. Uh, you'll also notice my number plate is starting to show dangerous signs of wear for a, for a plate that's not that old. I bought that plate brand new when I bought the car about five years ago, and it's now fading horrifically. So good job, RMS. Uh, changed the tail lights. I actually had the smoked black insert housing ones rather than the chrome before, which I actually like to look better, but these have LED indicators. Uh, and I, the old indicators in my other ones, which are so hard to see with the smoked lenses. So that was kind of a safety issue, but I do like the way the old ones look better. So if anyone knows of anyone that makes tail lights for these that are black housing inserts rather than chrome, but have LED indicators and LED tails, please send them to me. I will buy them. I think the only other external mod uh, you can ignore the, the nest of spider web that's on here. I know the car is filthy at the moment. As I said, it doesn't get out much. But I've got a genuine aero bar. I've had a bunch of these on the car. I've had a fiberglass one. I've had a couple of genuine ones. So this one is a genuine plastic factory aero bar with fog lights that are not currently connected, but it does have them in there, so I can connect them at some point. It's a bit rough looking at the moment. It had a little bit of a chip up the front there. The paint quality on it wasn't that good when I got it resprayed. It was just kind of a cheapy job. But you'll notice everywhere on the car, the paint is absolutely trashed. Um, and it's got some hail damage as well. As I mentioned, when it had no engine, it got cold and some hail. Couldn't do much about it. Tried to cover it, but the metal in some places is just so thin and the hail was massive. Um, in Australia, we do get some pretty wild weather occasionally. So we were having, you know, hail balls like this sort of size smack onto it, which was un hard to watch. But generally speaking, I think that's about all that's changed on the outside. Um, as I'll get into what my plans are for, for some of it, some of it may change and obviously I'm going to try and bring it back. You can see the clear coat I'll tell you is actually fine. It looks very faded, especially on this door and this side of the car because this is where when it sits outside this is where it gets all the sun. The other side is actually quite good but you can see it's just kind of clouded over. I think a good detail, uh, maybe a detail cut ceramic po ceramic coating or whatever will, will hopefully bring it back but if that doesn't it's probably going to need some paint work. Inside uh, not a whole lot has changed but it does have spec B interior. I had the original interior, like the standard sort of grey 200SX interior in here for ages, which I like. It looks tidy, but um, I put Recaros in for a little while, which I never really showed you guys. Just some uh, SR4s out of an Integra, and they sat too high, and they didn't sit centre, which bugged me, but they looked cool. But managed to snag this Spec B interior um, probably 18 months ago. Not sold on it. I would have preferred the orange, and it still sits too high. Carl's got a sunroof, and I'm like just a little bit too tall for it so I can't fit in here with a helmet at the moment, which has kind of always put me off doing anything track-wise with it. But um, I'm thinking at some point of maybe getting rid of a Spec B again and getting proper bucket seats, like a fix, maybe a fixed back, or if I can find something that reclines but sits way lower, maybe with side mount rails, I'll probably get that. So the Spec B may not stay. Apart from that, not much has changed. Just to show you some examples of the bodywork, um, you can see there's some dents here and there from the hail. So what I really need to do is go to a PDR place, get you know, throw a lot of money at them, get them to pull all the dents out that they can, then take it to a detailer, get them to uh, you know, cut the paint back, do you know, to throw the whole catalog at it basically, see if they can bring this paint back to life, which I think they will be able to because the clear coat's all there. It hasn't started coming off as far as I'm aware, as long as the clear coat's still there and it's not too thin to cut back through, it should be able to be saved. So that's what I'm hoping. I'm going to give that a go because it's going to be a lot cheaper than paintwork. In terms of moving the car forward, I would like to go back for a power tune at some point, try and make sort of that mid, mid 200s at the rears in kilowatts. I think that would be a nice place to get it. And then maybe once I get bored there, I might try and look to go <clears throat> high 200s, close to 300. That's a little while away. For the time being, I've just kind of been enjoying how it is now. And I think it's at a fairly good power level for the chassis on the street at least. But I would like to get onto some more, um, once I can fit with a helmet at least. I'd like to go to the drags, maybe do a track day of some sort, get a little bit more acquainted with it in anger on the track. Um, obviously I've been driving on the street for half a decade, so I know how it behaves, but it's always going to be a little bit different when you're going way over the speed limit and you don't have to care, so that'll be fun. But um, yeah, apart from that, that's kind of where it is now. I know it's a bit rough, I'm sorry, I know a lot of you'll be angry at me for seeing it in this condition, especially when you saw how OCD I usually was with it, but unfortunately life got in the way. Stay tuned, please subscribe, hit the like button if you want to see me resurrect the car. 
I've owned this car for what feels like forever, over five years, as I said. So it's kind of just part of me now. Like, I don't think I could ever actually get rid of it. Um, no matter how much trouble it gives me. It's easily been the most painful car that I've owned, and I've owned quite a few now. But... That's, geez, it's actually going off here today. There's a GTR over there revving its nuts off. There's bikes coming past. This is mad. Anyway, I just came down here to film a quick, quiet video, but it hasn't turned out that way. Uh, I, hope, I hope I haven't been too rambly. I just kind of thought I'd come and explain and show you guys around the car where it is now. Um, I don't think I've missed anything, but I probably have. It's been, like I said, a couple of years since you guys have, since I've got like some proper updates on the car, but there's going to be lots of stuff coming. And I also bought another car, which you haven't seen yet. Plan is trying to get some seat time. I want to get into some drifting, get into some other track events, just have some fun with a car that I don't care about and that isn't too expensive, which this one is. Um, these days, if you've been a Sylvia, like it's a big financial loss, and obviously I care about this car way too much to, to put it into a wall or anything like that. So I've got a car for some seat time, just a cheap little nugget, which you'll see in probably the next video. Uh, so I'll be banging doors with Tomo real soon. So stay tuned for that. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, please. We know a lot of our analytics, actually about 40% of our viewership is from non-subscribers. So if you do watch our videos and you're not subscribed, please do so. It lets us know you like the content and lets us know and keeps us motivated to keep going. So yeah, lots of cool stuff coming soon. Stay tuned. This has been Alex from Autology once again. Still with the 15. I'm going to go get a coffee and then I'm going to head home and edit this video. So peace out.